Thank you. Right. Meeting will come to please come to order. Thank you. All right. Jane to the home stretch, I hope. <laughs> it being 11 o'clock, we will take up the uh, motion on D5, Professional and Fan Artist Hugo Awards. I will take a speech for this motion, a speech against this motion, and then proceed to the uh, provided amendment D5-1. That seems to be the sensible way to proceed. So would somebody care to present the uh, motion, please? I think Andrew is confused. Andrew. We have a point of order. Andrew Adams, uh, point of order. Um, since amendments counter speeches against the motion, surely you would have to take a four against a four and then the amendment. Or a four no, and amendments just counts. No. Amendments count equally against both sides. Time in the amendment. Anyway, would somebody care to uh, speak for this motion, please? Perry Ann? Would a motion to refer this to committee to report next year be in order? Sure. I guess, yes. Then, then I make that, that motion. Is I there am a Perry Ann Lurie. Is there a second on that I'll motion? Point of order. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is I was giving you a chance. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe, Kevin Stanley, thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I believe that the, at least once that the, the maker of the motion gets priority and recognition if they want it or they can yield to that motion to uh, refer to committee. And, and I therefore, uh, I, I think the motion to refer is out of order until the proponent of the motion has been given one opportunity to speak. That seems reasonable to me. Cliff. I am still Cliff Dunn. Um, I will say, say the committee put a lot of time and effort into working this out, but obviously this was also not a uh, unanimous decision as noted in the submission for the business meeting. Um, I'm not quite sure what we will achieve with another year of uh, going around, but if, if the business meeting feels that we do need more revision on this, we can obviously take this up if you desire. Would anybody make, care to make a motion to uh, put this to committee of the whole? Yes, Kate. Thank you. Um, does anybody wish to speak to the motion to refer to, to go to committee of the whole? Any speech for, speech against? If nobody wishes to, we will vote on the question to uh, refer to, to put it into Committee of the Whole. Explain. Yeah, explain. We put it basically into a freer form of debate. I hope Jessie has researched this, because I got this dumped on me in 2016, and I'm about to dump it on her. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I thought that might be happening. <laughs> I did consider quasi-committee of the whole, where I would retain the chair, but I thought it would be good practice for you. <laughs> Those in favour of moving into committee of the whole show. Those against, motion is passed. Jessie, you have the con. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we she need to set a debate time, yes? No, because I'm the chair. Do we not need to set a time for how long we're going to be in Committee of the Whole? No. Okie doke. Okay. I don't know why you believe that. I, I, I think it's 20 minutes is still the limit. Yeah. Okay. Are we timing this or not, is what I want to know. <laughs> well, we set a time limit of 20 minutes. Okay. I'm going to ask the body to give me, like, two seconds to confer with my lovely chair to make sure I'm going to do this correctly. <laughs> You'll do a good job regardless. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything that's relevant to the main motion. Which okay. Yes. 
yes, it's part of the full 20 minutes. But you only use 40 seconds. But it doesn't go against, it goes equally against yeah, both yeah, sides. Yeah, it goes equally against both sides. Okay, thank you for uh, giving me the time to make sure I know what I'm doing. Okay, so we are now in a committee of the whole. The uh, time that we spend here will be taken out of the debate time uh, that has been set for D5. Uh, the time will be charged equally to both sides. The subject of D5, uh, D5-1, the amendment, and the topic of referring um, back to committee are all uh, germane for this discussion. So given that, is there anyone who wishes to speak? Not Joshua. Sure. Well, I don't have to take notes. It would probably be helpful if you do. Yeah. All right. Um, so I was on the committee. Uh, Joshua Cronengold, sure. Um, so I was on the committee, and what we have is an essential uh, difference in question of direction, which is why I think sending this back to a committee wouldn't help. What we need is a direction from the business meeting in terms of what, what direction we want to go. Um, the current uh, the, um, setup for, um, by, in effect, for professional and fan artist um, says that professional is a very specific and limited group of professionals who make money um, yeah. doing, uh, selling their art. And everybody else uh, yeah. is a fan artist. Regardless of whether we would consider them a fan artist, if you're not a professional, you're a fan artist. Daniello came up with a very interesting set of ideas and criteria for what we would consider a fan artist, um, which brings up the possibility that we could, instead of saying the professional is a very limited set, that instead we can say fan artist is a very limited specific set. We want to reward and privilege fan artists and say that if you're not a fan artist by our definition, you can still get a Hugo, but you're, um, but you're competing with professionals. The other possibility, which Ben is proposing, that is the amendment that's, uh, that's up in order, is to say that we would have a very specific and limited set of what we define a professional, a very specific and limited set of what we define a fan artist. Um, and if you're not in one of those categories, you're not eligible for an artist Hugo at all. Personally, I don't like that because I like giving out Hugos to things we like. And if, um, and you know, if something is not, a, if we're saying fan artist privileged, and something is not technically professional, if they can beat the professionals, then their professional quality, even if they're not making money. But I think that's the thing we're taking question of. Are we saying we want to exclude things? We want to say fan artist is privileged? Or do we want to say professional is privileged? And that is the direction we really need to have from the business meeting, whether or not we make a final decision today. Uh, ben Yellow? Ben Yallo. Uh, for the most part, I agree with much of Joshua's summary. However, one of the key points that he did not raise, and which is in both the D5 implementation and the D5-1 implementation, is that we are referring to professional artwork and fan artwork and saying that you are eligible in fan artist if you create fan art. You are eligible in professional artist if you create professional art. And the two differ in exact definitions. But the key is that we are not talking about a person as being either a professional artist or a fan artist. We are saying that a fan artist creates fan art a professional artist creates professional art, and the same person can be creating both. So that, for example, when in 1967, Jack Gaughan won both the best professional artist and best fan artist, it was because he was creating a brilliant set of book covers and magazine illustrations for the professional magazines, which got him best professional artist. 
And he was sending out hundreds of cartoons and sketches and things like that to fanzines, which clearly was fan art that he was creating, and therefore he was eligible and fan artist. And both D5 and D5-1 make it perfectly clear, and this is a really important point to me, that a person can be both a professional yeah. and a fan. We are not distinguishing that and saying that professionals are one class of persons in our community and fans are an entirely distinct class of persons in our community. That would be wrong. <coughs> Uh, I have a for ben. Uh, will this be will the speaker yield for the question? Yes. My name is Terry Neal. If I'm recalling correctly, we have something in the Constitution that says you can't have works in more than one category. Is so it is perfectly acceptable under the current Constitution to have a person eligible in more than one category for different works. That is correct, and both D5 and D5-1 continue to preserve that. A person can be eligible in the, two in the two fan categories so long as they are for different works. So that would be similar to someone getting a Hugo for best fan writer and also getting a Hugo for best fan zine. Yep. Um, Yes, although that one's a little bit trickier, but for example, we have had a number of years ago when Dave Langford won both for fan editor and at the same time a work of fiction of his won in the Professional Writing Awards. Thank you. And I yield. <laughs> Has there, you were saying, uh, the example everybody's been using has been 1967. Name? Elspeth Kovar. Um, are there any examples in the past 50 years? Um, the answer is not recently because in what I believe was a mistaken move, the Constitution shortly after Jack won was amended to say that you cannot be eligible in both professional and, both, and best fan artist. And there was a mis I believe that was a mistake and I believe strongly enough that that was a mistake that a few years ago I introduced an amendment to repeal that section of the Constitution, and the business meeting agreed with me that, yes, that was wrong for exactly the reasons that I stated earlier is why I believe that those two are not in competition with each other. So we've only had a few years during which the dual eligibility has even been possible. Uh, note the gone, gone amendment uh, to, was the short title, but that was only a few years ago, so we haven't had really a lot of time to have examples like that. Kate? I yield. Oh, oh. Yeah, I believe it's a new speaker. Oh, yeah, I've recognized Kate. Hi everybody, I'm Kate Secor. Um, I wanted to point a couple things out about D5 and D5-1. Um, I was also on the committee and one of the things that we really wanted to do was make it so that people who were working in, um, if I say non-pictorial, does that make sense? Like people who are doing sculpture or jewelry or, yeah, other, other kinds of media were also eligible. Um, so that's one of the big changes in fan artist. The other one is that it removes the requirement to be published in a semi-prozine or finzine. Um, the, the modern art world has moved on and there are lots and lots of places that somebody could be published that are not officially a semi-prozine or a fanzine. And the way that those, the way that the constitution is currently written, all of those people out making gorgeous fan art on the internet are not eligible. 
and that's sad. I mean, there's a lot of gorgeous stuff going on. So that's part of what's going on in the in the D5 changes is we're trying to expand our definition of fan artist to include all of the people that are currently making fan art. Um, I would like to note that I agree with Ben that people should be eligible in both fan and pro artist because there are people that are working on both sides of that line. I have concerns about the D51 amendment definition of a pro artist because all it says is somebody who makes their in more than a quarter of their income from their art. Um, it does not specify that it has to be, that we're only going to consider the art that you were paid for over here and the art that you were not paid for over there. And I think that the voters will be confused and think that anyone that makes more than a quarter of their income from their art cannot be eligible in fan artists, even if they are creating bodies of fan art. Um, I understand that that is not the technical intent of the amendment, but I'm a voter and that's how I would read it. So I have, I have some pretty serious concerns about that. The other thing is I have no idea how much money people make and I'm not about to start asking them. Um, so I, I oppose D5-1, but I think that the D5 changes are good because they would expand that universe of who we consider to be a fan artist. Yeah. I yield. Jerry Lohr. I'm sorry? Jerry Lohr, L-O-H-R. Um, so, uh, Speak to us. Ignore the chair. Face <laughs> the audience. In your discussion, you mentioned that uh, people working in all these other things that weren't prozines or Fans, fan, or sorry, fanzines or, or semi-prozines wouldn't be qualified, but it, there's a specific clause, or through other public non-professional display, which I, I think covers it completely. I'm, I'm reading this and I'm, I'm coming to the conclusion that I like status quo better than I like any of these, but that's another question. I'm not sure what your question was, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, I believe the speaker was not asking a question of the current speaker, but instead Sorry. engaging in debate. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's, yes, it's fine. but it's I still just, he he nice to be clear about what um, people are doing. There have been in so there was a sculptor last year who was nominated and was declared to not be eligible because they had not appeared in a fanzine and their sculpture had not appeared at a convention. Um, many people had seen it. There were gorgeous photos of it on the internet everywhere. Um, and they were ruled to be ineligible under fan artists because they hadn't met the strict requirements of display. Um, so while it is possible that the current wording would include things like I, you know, put it on DeviantArt with a Creative Commons license. Um, it has in the past not been interpreted that way, and having that explicit language in would make it easier for Hugo administrators to, to make the call that that wider universe is actually eligible. Um, it's a guidance from the business meeting thing. Oh, Hugo uh, Ms. Dashoff? Somebody just... Joni Prill Dashoff. Um, I was also on the best artist, well, the Hugo Rewrite Committee specifically for this one because I have been organizing art shows, both regional and world con and world fantasy, and also been on the Science Fiction Association Artists Board. And what we as WISFIS members have forgotten is that the form of publication and display has gone beyond physical books and physical art shows to include the internet. And we have upgraded the publications to include e-publish, but we have not had explicit wording that shows that. Even on the rewrite, in the fan artist, it's quite clear with common license that we include online display. We do not yet have, to me, as clear a wording that includes online for publish and public display. And I want to be able to correct that. Also, 
I don't think it's quite clear under the fan artist that the only exclusion is to the artist guest whose art is donated in lieu of compensation for housing and travel and food by the committee. They wanted to whiffle on that wording, and I believe it should only be the artist guest of honor who should be excluded in that category of donation, donated art. So I'm willing to accept a recommendation back to committee, but I would also like all the artists who came here today specifically to speak to also be heard so we know what else we need to consider on a rewrite. Thank you. Any, yeah, she's on questions. All right, uh, Mr. McCarty. Do you have a question? No question. Okay. okay, thank you. Hi, uh, I continue to be Dave McCarty. Um, a few years ago when we uh, worked to expand the definition of fan art beyond just illustration and fanzines, and we added uh, display at, at conventions, the thing that I think, I, I think that in, a, in an unintended way that broke fan art. Um, the art of fan art, the, the act of fan art is, is importantly the making that allowable for use by conventions and fanish things in lieu of compensation other ways. Um, so, uh, you know, just because somebody is not a professional artist and they have art on deviant art does not necessarily make it fan art. They have to, they have to make that stuff available to fanish things in lieu of compensation. And that's why I find the uh, D5 much better than D51 because it brings it back in line and it says if you make your art available to fanish things more generally and it's not just conventions then that is fan art and if you do art other ways that is not fan art and I think that that's a good way to draw the line that pr that better defines fan art. Uh, is it a question or debate? It's a specific response to your D5 Okay. Okay. But given that you've already spoken, I'm going to let the person who also popped up before you go first. Sorry, Perky. Thank you. I remain Perky. Um, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. McCarthy for raising that point. Uh, specifically, the wording here says for which the rights to reproduce that artwork have been given without direct compensation to one or more non-commercial publications or for use or in non-profit science fiction or fantasy conventions. We don't have this clause in fanzine. We don't have this clause in fan writer. We don't have this clause in fan cast. Why are we requiring fan artists to give away their work uh, for anyone else to reproduce? Why cannot, you know, a fanzine posted on the internet, a fan artwork posted on the internet, why are they not equivalent? I think there are definite merits in reevaluating and updating this to cover electronic publication of art, but a clause for, you know, giving away rights, I, I do not think that is appropriate. I I do want to, before we continue, let the body know that we have approximately two to three minutes left in the uh, 20 minutes that was given for the entire uh, entire discussion. Motion to extend. Yes. Uh, do you have a preference for how long we extend debate for in your motion? Uh, let's say another 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes. Okay, I heard a second. Second. Uh, there's a point of order from somewhere. Yeah. Multiple. Yeah. Multiple. Ben. The 20 minutes is under the control of the main meeting. We are in quasi-committee, sorry, we are in yeah. committee of the whole, not even quasi-committee of the whole, and therefore have no power to adjust the time limits because that can only be done when we are in session and not in committee of the whole. This is well taken. Whatever. That's true. The point is well taken. Uh, there's another point of order. Seth. Move to suspend the rules. Seth. We don't have the power to suspend the rules. Yeah. 
The only thing we can do is rise from the board. We can rise from the board. I do not believe, Seth Breitbart, I do not believe that the motion to go into a committee of the whole had a time limit on us. Therefore, we go until we end by vote. Not well taken, I don't think. Can I, I don't think that's well taken. It's all part of the same thing. Can I, let me confer with my parliamentarian for one moment, who's very far away from me. <laughs> My parliamentarian says the same thing that the uh, chair said to me before he put me in charge, was, which is that the time of the Committee of the Whole does indeed come out of the debate time given to the main motion. Um, is that, are you rising for a point of order? Okay. Uh, okay, feel free. What is your point of order? Microphone. Yeah, microphone please. I'm sorry, folks, I wasn't expecting this when I came in this morning. <laughs> Todd Dashoff, does that ruling mean that this Committee of the Whole can exhaust whatever time it takes, and then when it returns into the whatever we call the normal business, have a, have a situation where time may have elapsed because of the Committee of the Whole deliberations, or does it force this Committee of the Whole to a specific time limit? I can use all the time, and when we come back, there's zero time, but somebody can still yeah. move to extend. I, I believe he's asking if it can go past the 20 minutes, words, though. We talk for a week if we want, and no. then when we get back, say, oh, no. time's exhausted. No, I, we can talk for the amount of time that was set for the debate on the main motion. When we would come back to that, debate time would be exhausted. However, um, our standing rules do provide for situations in which debate time has been exhausted before one side of the motion has had time to speak, in which case that would come into effect. Chair, I yeah. think I have a way out of your weeds. Thank you. <laughs> if you'll let me, if you'll recognize me. Yes, I recognize you so much. Kevin Stanley, uh, am I correct that I should use Madam Chair as the correct form of address? That works for now, thank at you. least. Um, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, um, I move that the Committee of the Whole rise and request guidance from the main meeting on its debate time. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to suggest that. Are there any objections to doing so? Uh, seeing an objection, we will uh, vote on this. All those in favor of having the main body, you, okay, I won't restate it, uh, since you're already voting, thank you. All those opposed, uh, it passes. Mr. Stanley. Kevin Stanley. Madam Chair, um, I move that we go into committee of the whole. <laughs> with a debate with uh, not more than 16 more minutes of debate time before it must rise and report to the main meeting. 16 or 16. One six. Before I respond to that, bef I'm going to ask unanimous consent of the body that I be allowed to chair this right now, even though I'm chairing the Committee of the Whole and I'm technically not allowed to chair Tem what's happening right now, but yeah. Tem had an emergency. Yeah, okay. Are there any objections? No. Thank you. Uh, All right, now I move the motion I just made a moment ago. Yes, I heard a second. Is there any objection to having the Committee of the Whole resume for not more than another 16 minutes? See none, we are back in Committee of the Whole. Thank you for everyone's assistance. Uh, Mr. Buff. I believe part of the reason that we, that we postponed Warren Buff, I believe part of the reason we postponed definitely today was because of the conflict with the ASFA meeting. Could I see a show of hands of artists in the room? I would like to yield the, some of my speaking time to this artist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry you have the chair's apologies because of the lights behind you. I'm realizing that I was not seeing your card. I'm very sorry. 
thought it was vibrating enough. Madam Chair, my name is Maureen Starkey. I am uh, a Hugo Award winner uh, from 2012 from ShyCon. And um, I have a history just like Worldcon. Worldcon is very, uh, very much proud of its history and how it's grown over these years. And the thing that links the fan artists with Worldcon and is the fanzines. It's the writers. They, the, the, the fan writers of the fanzines are very much connected. They go hand in hand. I don't want to see that uh, diminished in any way. I don't want it to be the end all and be all for any fan artist who, who does contribute a lot of artwork to fanzines and a lot of artwork to uh, conventions. I mean, I've done sculptures, I've done hall decorations, I've had one, one a thing, and I'm sorry it's not eligible, but that tower out there, that is the greatest piece of fan art that you have ever seen. That was totally done at one person's expense, and, and it, it, is, it is a symbol of our convention this year. So <laughs> let's not, you know, diminish fan scenes and, and the importance that that artists that, who love this stuff, who love these genres, um, that love movies, you know, that, that they, they can't be part of that. Just, okay, and that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are there any other artists here who'd, who'd like to speak? Did I yield the floor? Oh, wait. Are, was that because you're an artist or just wish, okay, uh, Terry. My name is Terry Neal, and I'm hearing two axes on each side. I'm hearing one where we award this to a body of art that was created during a year, and the other side of that being that we award to a person. And so far I've heard that we're more interested in awarding to a body of art created during a year, which may mean a, a change of title when the Hugo Committee takes this. The other thing I'm access I'm hearing is, do we want this to be a wispus con fan linked uh, fan artist, or do we want it to be any sort of celebration of any kind of fandom anywhere? Um, and I think that uh, that axis is something that we need to work on telling the committee wh which side of that seesaw they, w they should come down on when they, when they uh, look at this again. Okay. Madam Chairman, I'm Kent Bloom, and when I came, when, when, we, when we created the committee of the whole, I was confused about what we were going to do. I thought that we would probably report back to that uh, no changes. As it is, I'm seeing this is much more complex than I thought originally, uh, particularly in the area of defining what is uh, fan art or fan, uh, a fan artist or profe uh, what is a professional art, what is professional art or a professional artist. I am quite convinced that uh, our, 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 that f we are giving awards to artists, not to, fan, not to the artwork, because giving awards to the artwork has not worked in the past, and we should continue to do it that way. However, I'm not convinced that we have a good definition of, or at least a simple definition, uh, that we can understand of what is professional or non-professional art. I don't care which side you define. And therefore, I move that this committee do now rise and, and refer the, recommend that it be referred back to the committee that created it to, do, to better define and more simply define what is a professional and what is a, non, a fanish art. Second. Um, I haven't heard a second. I apologize. Um, the chair was getting clarification on a parliamentary thing and missed the actual motion, which is very bad on me. I'm very sorry. Can you restate it? I can. 
I uh, move that the committee now rise and report to the main meeting that this should be referred back to the committee, uh, which created it, for a better definition of either professional or non-professional or, uh, or, or professional or fanish art or both. Okay, thank you. I'm very sorry about that. Um, I heard a second. Um, yes, uh, this motion is debatable, I believe. Yes. I'm a little in the weeds and I'm just wanting to make sure I'm doing everything right. Uh, Andrew Adams. Thank you for timing. Um, it's just not going to come out of it. I remain Andrew Adams. Uh, Madam Chairman, as one of the people who was on this committee and who was heavily involved in the development of the wording of this particular uh, proposal, I am not sure that without a significant input of new people with strong uh, opinions and a good idea of what they want on this, that the committee can come up with anything else. So um, I'm, I'm not saying I definitely strongly object to this, but I would suggest that we need a show of hands of people who were not on the committee last year, who have good information and good opinions to put forward into this committee, because otherwise you're going to get the same thing if it's just the same people. So. Could I have a show of hands of people who were not on the committee last year who would be willing to put their time in? Okay, fine. I th therefore withdraw my objection. Okay, thank you. Uh, Todd Dashoff? Um, are we going in favor of the, of the motion? Oh, yes, I apologize. Yes, in favor. Well, I don't have <laughs> 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 We are still in Committee of the Whole, and therefore debate time is being charged equally. However, it is still sometimes helpful for the body, for people to know an approximation of whether they're arguing in favor or against before they start speaking. <laughs> uh, Madam Chairman, I am still Todd Dashoff. I would request guidance from the chair as to how much time remains so I know how fast to talk. Uh, nine minutes. Thank you. Oh, sorry, eight minutes. I'm not going to, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't two. Uh, Ms. Neal earlier talked about a two-dimensional grid in terms of, okay, you said three. I only heard two, but <laughs> I was going to say that Mr. Bloom had therefore changed it to a three-dimensional grid. We have to be careful when we're talking here because I've heard the terms being swapped around. We have professional, non-professional. We also have professional fan. They are not the same thing. And I agree with the people that have like Mr. Adams, who have raised the issue. If we don't get guidance as to what is more important from the membership, you're going to get the same thing back because we're going to decide what we think is more important in that three-dimensional grid. And at, right at this point in time, we have come between professional and fan. And non-professional has basically been pushed into one of those buckets. Uh, Kate? Are you approximately speaking for or against? Against. Okay. Hi, I'm still Kate Secor. The only substantive change that I've heard people asking for would be to link fan artist back more strongly to fanzines, which I swear to you now I will oppose with every breath in my body to the point of doing an amendment by substitution if that comes back. Um, I have not heard anyone else have any other objections to the motion as it is. I think it's better than what we had. I think it's a pretty substantial improvement in terms of who gets to be part of the fan artist community. So I, I also share all the doubts that I, we're going to come up with anything different given the only change that's been proposed is to link it back to fanzines, which was actively, that separation was part of actively the intent of the current motion. So I would oppose sending it back to the committee and just pass what we have. It's probably not going to change that much. Uh, the person in the back with the card, do you need a mic brought to you? I can watch it. Okay. Lou Walkoff, and I'll spell that if people want. Um, I'm speaking neither for nor against. It seems to me that one 
the original committee has enough other stuff to do, and two, there is enough depth of feeling to justify it. So I would like to amend the motion to say that a new committee be created specifically to address these two. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's the amount of feeling that I'm hearing about the importance of how this issue is resolved would seem to me to be strong enough to justify creating another committee. And it is only a temporary committee, so we're not tagging it forever. I'm sorry, Kevin, but that's, that's what I feel. Uh, one moment. Uh, I believe that motion is currently out of order. However, we can take that as foreshadowing, uh, as the, well, my once, chair put once it, we're out once we're out of committee of the whole. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we'll just go with the parliamentary inquiry closest to me first. Martin Pine, parliamentary inquiry. Is it in order for the committee of the whole to report back anything other than a recommendation, than a recommendation to adopt or adopt with amendments? The committee of the whole can, I believe, report back anything it wants. To recommend the business meeting to do. To, to recommend the, anything they want to recommend the business meeting to do. Are these still parliamentary inquiries? Uh, no, this was a uh, response to the gentleman Okay. Mr. Dunn. Madam Chairman, uh, I'm still Cliff Dunn. Uh, we explicitly intended to form a subcommittee within the Hugo Study Committee, which reported this out in order to, um, you know, further further study things if it comes back. Uh, we are trying to ensure that there is focus on these individual items to the extent that they got lost in a larger mishmash this year. Now, that being said, I also want to mention that the Fanzine Award is also required to be a uh, nonprofit slash non-compensated thing. Fanwriter is tied to Fanzine, so all of these are tied to some form of non-compensation. Uh, so that, that's, that's not really an issue. And I would finally point out that if we don't have some sort of guidance, as several speakers have said before, we're probably going to end up with something similar. And Mr. Bloom initially stated that he wanted a simpler definition. And I'm not sure that given the nuances of technology and changing technology they, these days, that a simpler definition can realistically result. Uh, Elspeth? Elizabeth Kovar, um, a different uh, idea can result because at the moment very few artists know that this is being debated. If they know that there is going to be a committee working on this, they will participate and therefore we will get um, input from the artistic community and get some idea of what they think is best including best professional, non-professional, best pro, best fanzine. Um, if this goes back to committee, people who are involved in the arts can join up on the committee and we will get better input than we currently have. We are at two minutes remaining in debate. Um, <laughs> Patrice. Uh, yeah, Patrice, sorry. <laughs> Petraea Mitchell, um, it has, I would like to echo the comments that there are multiple issues being addressed in D5 and D51, and it seems to me that there are people's opinions on the various different issues um, vary. Uh, I think that one thing that could be gained by sending this back to committee is to separate out proposals dealing with these different issues so that they may be addressed and debated separately. Uh, uh, Maureen again. Okay. This is my time. Uh, whatever. I'll be right. You've got a minute. Okay. This is Madam Chairman, I'm Maureen Starkey. Uh, it, it's funny, you go to sit down and you realize, oh, there's all this other stuff I could have said. I don't want fanzines to go away. I, and, and, and I have been 35 plus years in the computer game industry, so I know about e-publishing and all this stuff that's coming up, that this new, this new world, that we can publish things online and be seen. I just want to put a bug in your ear. Like I tell my students, 
Computers are a fairy gift. They can let you do these amazing things, publications, incredible art, but without electricity, it might as well still be in your head. So think about that for a moment as we think about technology for the future. And, and let's, you know, artists, artists, uh, they're judged by the work that they do. And that's my thing. Thank you. We are at five seconds remaining in debate. Uh, so the, we do have a motion on the floor from Kent Bloom uh, to, that the Committee of the Whole rise and report back uh, to the main business meeting, uh, suggest, recommending that uh, we refer back to committee. Um, all those in favor of that recommendation, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, uh, the motion passes. Uh, the Committee of the Whole is now disbanded. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Chairperson, the Committee of the Whole recommends that the main business meeting refer uh, the motion back to committee. To the Hugo Study Committee or to a new committee? To the Hugo Study Committee, I believe. Uh, the, if the Secretary is able to read back the uh, Kent Bloom's motion, for the specific wording. I'm oh, sorry, we had a Facebook fueled family crisis. It was more generic. But yeah, I think it was generic. I'm not fine. Okay. A committee. Okay, right. then it was to a committee. I apologize. Talk to the business meeting, whether it's the same or different. And you can, you can have this back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we said you were still out of time. Right. We are out of time. The question. <laughs> Which question are you going to That was what I was going to say. First, coming up, the question, I think, the bottom of the top of the stack currently will be to refer D5 and D51 to back to the Hugo Study Committee for to report next year, and uh, for Cliff to work out how he wants to handle it, whether in the main committee or in a subcommittee. Second. Rick Corral, take us when I see you in the chair. Yes. Yes. Any second? Second. Those in favor, extending for five minutes. Those against. Motion is about even. Let's have serpentine. <laughs> oh, it's two thirds. In that case, the motion is lost. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Kent. Because the, the Hugo Committee does not appear to appreciate having this referred back to them, I, I move to amend to suggest a new committee to, right. to be appointed by the chair. Thank you. Gee, what fun. Uh, there being no time left for debate, we therefore move immediately to the amendment to the motion to refer, to refer it to a separate committee and not the Hugo Study Committee. Those in favor of a new committee, please show. Plenty. Okay. Those against, please show. No, I think it's a big one. I think yeah. that passes. What was your point of order? Uh, would it be microphone. Uh, microphone. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I got it. It's fine. Thank you. Uh, I was just about to say it. Just wait, Jesus. <laughs> I continue to be Jay Spitzer. Uh, would it be out of order to ask what the purpose of the request for extension by five minutes was? was? Yes, it would be out yes, of order. Would be out of order. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And right. Um, we believe that the uh, motion to send it to a new committee and not the Hugo Study Committee passed. Uh, is there a request for a division? I request a division. Thank you. Right. So, Yes. Kevin Stanley. Mr. Chairman, uh, we went, we, we're going very fast, and most of us don't follow this quickly. I believe the motion, I would like to add, know exactly what we're voting for. I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that the actual motion we are about to vote on is whether to amend the motion to send to committee by striking out Hugo Awards Study Committee and inserting a committee to be appointed by the chair, 
which means that even if it passes, the thing hasn't been sent to committee yet. We're just deciding if we co if we commit it, we're deciding which committee we're referring to. Is that correct, Mr. That Chairman? is correct. That is Thank the exact you. stack that we have <laughs> at this point. Yes, Todd. Oh, there was a request for a division of the House on that motion. Todd Dashoff. Mr. Chairman, given the assignment to the UGO committee yesterday, does this preclude the UGO study committee from also coming up with a recommendation on this? <laughs> I don't think Cliff would be that stupid. <laughs> 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 no, uh, the Hugo Study Committee, Hugo Award Study Committee can look at anything in Article 3 and could therefore consider this. But I don't think he'll be well advised to do so. Uh, Judith, I think, no, sorry. Linda. Linda Ross Mansfield. Uh, yes, we've been going fast and it's very hard to keep, keep track of everything. I would like to request the, the chair, when he appoints a person for the committee, ensure that at least one or two people from the previous committee are on it for some continuity. Thank you. I will attempt to do so. First, we have the question division, whether we want a new subcommittee or a uh, send it to the Hugo subcommittee. The mo um, those in favour of sending to a new committee, please stand and count off. Which side do you want to start on? Tim, which side do you want to start on? Well, I let the sergeant at arms pick. And don't forget the head table. You have to say those in favour of amending. So if the subsidiary motion passes, we're not actually voting on sending it to a different no, the question was on sending it to the Hugo committee or to a new committee. I want those in favour of sending it to a new committee. No. Those in favour of the amendment. Sorry, it's the way I'm phrasing it. It's not what I... We are not sending it to a committee at this point. We are determining whether a new... Whether, if we send it to somewhere, we send it to a new committee or to the existing committee. The, yeah? You can sit down if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Perky. Mr. Chairman, the original motion from the Committee of the Whole was to send it back to the committee who had proposed it. So it, that, that was that was very clearly stated. Yes, but we can amend that. The okay. Such an amendment was made. We are now okay. deciding whether that amendment will be passed or not. Can you? Right. Those in favour. On remi if this is remitted to a committee, those in favour of remitting it to a new committee, please stand and count off. One, two, up here. 38 up here. Yeah. Wait till the very uh, end or the very beginning. Yeah. Right. Don't do it in the middle. Uh, the head table. 40. 40. 40. <laughs> up there. 41 was it? Like. 40. 40, I think. Yeah. 41. 41. Thank 41. you. That's the advantage of doing it like this. 41. 4. We'll do the head table last. Okay. Yeah. Those in favour should it be remitted to a committee of sending it to the existing Hugo Study Committee, please show and count off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13. Yeah, speed up. So we, if we send this to a committee, it will be a new committee. Now, on the motion to uh, remit D5 and D51 to a new committee. Those in favour, please show. Quite a lot. Those against, remission, fewer. The motion is remitted to a new committee to study the question. Do I have a volunteer to take up the burden? Or do I get to pick someone? <laughs> you have two yeah. hands. Who's and Seth is also doing it. Ah, Seth. <laughs> In many. <laughs> Dave is also raising his hand. Dave, are you a question or are you a volunteer? Dave, I'll take you. I trust you to do a good job. <laughs> was that the committee chair or the yes. committee people? Committee chair. Sign-up sheet will be at the front after the meeting. Thank you. And we'll get it to all to Dave. Uh, Terry. I have a question. Dave who? McCarty, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Dave McCarty. That concludes that. We have, I believe, one item of business remaining. The, today's spare sheet, Amendment to Standing Rules, D8. Short title, This Belong in, Constitu in the Constitutional Amendment, um, which does uh, things that Ben and Chris attempted to do yesterday as part of an existing motion. It's come back as a separate motion because it was not germane to the original. Mr. Gallo, would you care to speak to this? What's the time on this? Uh, whoops, set, let's set five minutes on this. Any objection to five minutes? Seeing none, it's five minutes. As I indicated yesterday, I do not believe that the standing rules can really bind a WorldCon committee, except where the Constitution explicitly makes it clear that they are bound by the standing rules. So that in this motion, I explicitly make it clear that the Worldcon is bound by Standing Rule 2.1 when picking their w deadline for when they get their reports in. Uh, it has also been noted that there is a question as to the change in four point in SR 4.4. Uh, would go into effect next year. No, it would not. Uh, chairman ruled uh, in 2005, in fact, it was Mr. Illingworth at the time, that where there is a dependency with a constitutional amendment and a standing rules change, that the standing rules change is packaged in and therefore you can get them both or you can get none of them, but you can't get the standing rules changed without the constitutional amendment. Basically, what I'm s trying to do is remind people that world cons get bound by the constitution. The business meeting binds the business meeting and the subsidiary committees that the business meeting creates. So we can set our own rules for anything we feel like except we don't control committees except through the Constitution. And this amendment puts it into the Constitution that the Worldcon committees shall be bound by the deadline, which otherwise, while our current Constitution asserts they are, they really aren't. Thank you. Speech against? Mr. Bloom.
Mr. Chairman, I'm Kent Bloom. Um, I'm not convinced that it's a good idea to tell WorldCons that they have to wait a whole year if they miss the deadline to give their financial report, because we really want to see the financial report even if it comes in late and has to be independently copied. Uh, therefore, I would like to suggest either a ruling of the chair or a resolution of the business meeting that since it's in the discretion of the chair to, uh, to uh, accept late reports in business, that it be strongly recommended that in the case of uh, Worldcon financial reports, they be accepted as late as the end of the business meeting. That has certainly been our usual practice. Um, Kevin, do you wish to speak to the matter? Kevin Stanley. Mr. Chairman, uh, it's late. And what sounds like a simple matter has unexpected consequences. And I actually have spoken to other members, including the parliamentarian, prior to this. We actually have had this situation in place for a while now, and it hasn't caused the society to collapse. I do believe that it is something worth considering and that we should work it out, but I don't think that we can get a, quite a set of wording that will please everyone here today. I therefore move that this matter be referred to the Nitpicking and Flyspecking Committee and that the committee be directed to consult with the sponsors of the motion to obtain wording to, ref to report to next year's business meeting. Second. Thank you. And that, of course, was a speech in favor of my uh, motion. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak against the motion to refer? Anyone wish to amend the motion to refer to, so to come back Monday? <laughs> um, hearing none, we shall proceed to vote on the question of referral. Those in favor of referring D8 to the Nitpicking and Flyspecking Committee as augmented, please show. Thank you. Those against referral, please show. None. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> That concludes the official business of the uh, Worldcon. Deb, I believe you would like to say something. My name is Deb Geisler, and I would move that we adjourn sine die in honor of Milt Stevens and Julian May. Uh, would the, Mr. Chairman, would the member consent to the motion being a lot uh, Come up and say what you want to do. We're friends here. There are announcements that need to, Mr. Chairman, uh, I hate to speak against the motion. There are announcements that need to be made before we adjourn, and I ah, would ask right. the member to uh, withdraw their motion temporarily. Certainly. Thank yeah. you. You have one as well, right? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the first announcement that I think is irrelevant here is that uh, at 12.30 in this spot, uh, is the Worldcon chair's photo session. And it is possible that there are some Worldcon chairs who have not gotten the word despite our best attempts to get programming to schedule them all for it. So if you know some of those Worldcon chairs, you might want to go tell them. Okay. Uh, related to that is it, I would really appreciate, as one of the people trying to put, uh, organize this, the help of some of you who might be interested in this to, to stay after the meeting and help move the forward rows of chairs to rearrange this. Okay, I mean the lecterns, which we do. Facilities told us we could. All right, the all right, fine. But we do need to do some rearranging here. So, yes, the facilities, the head of facilities told us they could do it. I'll tell you about, I'll tell you about it later. Okay, but anyway, it is going to happen after, and we are going to do that photo session, so please remember that. Thank you. Uh, Terry first, then Todd. My name is Terry Neal, and I have a resolution I would like to introduce at this time. Um, I would like to introduce a resolution that the chair of this business meeting and the secretary communicate with the Laguin estate and um, ascend to them our e extreme esteem and regard for Ms. Laguin uh, with a little bit of perhaps explanation or uh, information about what happened with the proposal and withdrawal of the re-renaming the Le Guin Lodestar Award, um, and that this be an official communication from the World Science Fiction Society to the Le Guin Estate. 
I have some suggested wording, which, but I would, I, I would not want to uh, bind them to that. I think that they are capable of coming up with wording on our behalf. Second. Moved and seconded. Anybody wish to speak for or against this motion? I'd like to speak for it. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of the proposal to change the Lodestar Young Adult Award to the Ursula Le Guin Lodestar Young Adult Award, uh, or what happened with that. Um, it is my concern that it has caused the Le Guin estate to be hurt by actions associated with the World Science Fiction Society, and I would like to do what we can to ameliorate that and uh, send to them how much we love and adored her and miss her and did not want to cause them any harm at all with what happened amongst ourselves. Kate, please. Mr. Chairman, while I am deeply in sympathy with the feelings expressed by Ms. Neal, and I wish we could do that, once we have adjourned CNADA, we no longer have a business meeting chairperson or secretary unless they are the people appointed for next year. And this meeting cannot, to my understanding, bind that meeting. I believe this resolution is actually out of order. Good question. Don, do you have an opinion? Make it a request rather than an order. I think it's you know, an informal request. I think that, that we can ask people yeah. to do something. I mean, we can decide the society should send a, uh, a we can decide the society should send a letter, and it's up to the, then, you know, it's up to the chair to ma execute that. And you can right. yourself yep. to appoint somebody. I don't know. And consult with Chris to find out what, Terry. Uh, ah, at the back. Lou, can someone run a mic back to Lou? Still Lou Walkoff. My name is still Lou Walkoff. I spoke to Chris after I learned that the motion had had been withdrawn, and it's my understanding he has already communicated with the Le Guin family on this point. Thank you, Terry. What were you? I would like to respond to that, that to my knowledge, Chris has no authority from the World Science Fiction Society to communicate with the Le Guin estate on our behalf at all. And I think that this is an official communication. I'm certainly willing to entertain any amendment to my resolution that would facilitate this happening. But I don't think that Chris has authority from the World Science Fiction Society to speak on our behalf. That would be Ben. Similar to Kate's belief, we cannot bind anybody outside the control of this business meeting. We cannot request WISFUS to do anything except through the constitutional amendment process. Sorry, we cannot require WISFIS to do anything outside of the constitutional amendment process, and therefore WISFIS can't send such a note. This business meeting does have the authority to bind Tim or other members of the podium staff. Kevin Standley. Mr. Chairman, the chair has not ruled on the original point of order. <laughs> Stop Where shouting. Were we? The one from Kate about Kate's whether or not the resolution is in order. Oh. Because we can't. Because the uh, business meeting terms expire. Hmm. Or should I let you be bound by it? <laughs> Could I? I am uncertain. Can I speak? Uh, uh, Don, yes, advice, please. Oh. Um, I believe that uh, there have been uh, motions before the business meeting that have passed before to express thanks uh, and things like that. And there have also been motions to condemn things, which usually got uh, 
you know, ruled out of order, would usually had objection to consideration sustained. So certainly the, uh, the, business, the business meeting can adopt on behalf of the society sentiments uh, and things like that. And I, I see no reason why the business meeting couldn't uh, adopt a motion that a, that a letter be sent. And it's really kind of up to the presiding officers to the mechanism by which that's executed. Right. Um, so we could have a motion, a resolution of the bi this business meeting now that they regret any distress caused to the uh, Le Guin estate and directing an officer of the business meeting to send such a letter at some point in the future. Sure. That sounds like a reasonable expression of what Terry was after. Request, make a request, don't direct. I accept that amendment. Right. That the business meeting resolves that they regret any distress caused to the uh, Le Guin estate by uh, the proposal and withdrawal of the uh, renaming of the Lodestar Award and uh, further directs that the uh, business meeting staff uh, communicate this to the estate. Big request. Re Dr. Perianne. Thank what? you. Perianne Lurie, could the business meeting ask the Mark Protection Committee, which will still be in existence, to draft that and send that letter? No, I don't think the business meeting could. Not by resolution. It is not within the powers of the Mark Protection Committee because it does not protect a mark. Uh, it is the Lodestar Award is the mark. Yes. Todd. Uh, microphone, please, Todd. I'm not telling you this, but I'm not We haven't set time. I know, we haven't set time. Can we have five minutes already expired? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the problem is not direct. Can make it a request? Yeah. No problem. Todd Dashoff, Mr. Chairman, could you please inform the membership where we stand with regard to Ms. Neal's request? Because I would like to propose an amendment to Ms. Geisler's. Uh, motion, and I'm not sure if we're at it yet or we still have to wait for it. We still have to wait for it. Still have to wait for that. Okay. We're talking about uh, Ms. Neal's resolution, which currently um, resolves that the business meeting regrets any offence caused to the uh, Le Guin estate and requests that the uh, current podium staff write a letter expressing this. Anybody else wish to speak to that resolution? Kent. I'm Kent Bloom, Mr. Chairman. While I have absolutely every respect for Ms. Le Guin, um, and I believe it is appropriate for us to, to uh, adopt a resolution of condolences to her uh, estate, I do not think that the business meeting should accept that members of the business meeting can bring the business meeting in, in, into disrepute with impunity uh, and that we will acknowledge that. Members of the business meeting who are working on or considering business to bring before the meeting are doing so in their own capacity as members and not as part of the World Science Fiction Society and we should not be apologizing for them. Thank you, Kent. Uh, Terry, you wish to speak? It was not my intention to prefer an apology. Merely support and respect. Thank you. Uh, Josh. Second. Well, those in favor of the resolution? Oh, sorry, previous. Yeah. End debate. End debate, is to end debate. Does anybody wish to speak further to this motion? Seeing none, uh, the motion to uh, close debate. Those in favour of closing debate, show. Those against closing debate, none. Those in favour of the resolution, please. Oh, restate. Linda, do you have whatever it was we came up with? <laughs> yeah, hold on. Um, Your microphone has wandered. What I have, and we can reword it, is that the WISFIS business meeting regrets any distress caused the Laguna estate and that the chair should communicate with the estate 
those feelings. Those in favour of that resolution, please show. Few. Those against, please show. I think the nays have it. Division, please. Please, those in favour of the resolution, please stand. Twenty-three, four. Those against the resolution, please stand and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, That is 23 in favour, 31 against the motion. The resolution therefore fails. Uh, is there any other business before we adjourn for the, the business meeting? Well. And because people keep coming up and asking yes, me, Kevin Stanley, the Wusfus Mark Protection Committee will meet, yes, it's a pee in a barrel, in this room, uh, 11.30 tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, which is Monday, that is not today, but tomorrow at 11.30. If anybody else in this room still doesn't know when the Mark Protection Committee meeting uh, is, I have no sympathy for you at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Todd, is your motion to amend the adjournment? In that case, I, I have one further thing to do. Yeah. One further thing to do before we uh, adjourn sine die, which is to present my Deputy Jesse Lip, who is chairing next year with a ceremonial crab mallet from Constellation <laughs> Worldcon 83. <laughs> I like to have a crab mallet up here on the uh, podium <laughs> to hit people with. <laughs> Deb, back to you. Mr. Chairman, I um, would like to move that the business meeting adjourn sunny day in honor of Milt Stevens and Julian May, um, late um, and former World Con chairs, and to also thank the podium staff for their excellent job. Thank you. Todd, you wish to speak. Todd, do you wish to speak still? Thank you very much. Right, any, in favour of the adjourning so? Against adjourning so? Business meeting is adjourned sine die till Dublin. Yeah, we already ran five minutes over the schedule. <laughs>